We're interested in solving this problem about carbon dating. Carbon in the atmosphere consists of stable isotopes, carbon-12 and carbon-13, and unstable radioactive carbon-14 formed by solar radiation. Living organisms have carbon-14 in the same ratio as in the atmosphere, but once the organism dies, the total amount of carbon-14 is fixed and starts to decay. The half-life for carbon-14 is 5,730 years. If a carbon sample shows radioactivity that is 40% of the level of living samples, how old is the sample? We start by looking for clues in the problem. When we talk about half-life, the idea of half-life is that the amount decreases by 50% every time increment of 5,730 years. So if I think about time zero as being 100% radioactive, so let's say 100% radioactive, then every 5,730 years it decreases by half. So after one half-life, we're at 50 percent, but at two half-lifes, which is 11,460 years, I'm at half of half, which is 25 percent. So every time I increase by a half-life in time, my quantity of radioactivity decreases by half. And this is essentially describing exponential decay. For equal time increments, the ratio is what is constant. So we have a constant ratio of a half for every time increment that corresponds to 5,730 years. And that's what it means to have a half-life. And every time we see a problem with half-lives, because of this constant ratio per time increment, we know we have an exponential model. So here's a graph. Exponential decay looks something like this. And if I imagine starting at 100% of radioactivity, and I have some value for 50%, this is my half-life. And every time increment of a half-life, I drop by 50%. So this would be two half-lifes. And three half-lifes, I'd be half of that again, so I'd be at one-eighth. So this is an example of exponential decay. Now let's label our other axis time, T, and radioactivity, let's call R. And our model for exponential growth or decay is that the dependent variable is a e to the k times the independent variable. Here a and k are what we call model parameters. Once we've identified what kind of model we're working with, and we've identified our variables, so we have our variables t and r, and we have our model r equals a e to the kt. We can now look at the information we're given and the information we need. So we're given information about the half-life. And we want, at what time am I at 40%? Because if I can find the time when I'm at 40%, I've identified the age of my sample. Here's an interesting observation uh, to start. 
we actually don't know how much carbon we started with. So how do we translate the half-life? The idea of half-life says that when t equals the half-life time, 5730, r will be one half of what it would be, of what it would be if t equals zero. In other words, if I had this in the language of a, of a function, the radioactivity at time 5730, so this is after the half-life, the radioactivity at half-life will be one half of the radioactivity at time zero. And so this is the language of functions. So this is at the start. And if I use my, my model that r equals a e to the kt, then I can use a e to the k times 5730, a e to the kt, will be equal to one half of my function at zero. So that's a e to the k times zero. Notice, by the way, that there's a common factor on each side of a, and so if I divide by a, it cancels. I also note that k times zero is zero, and so I can I can solve by replacing that with a one. What I get is e to the k times five seven three zero is equal to one half. This lets me solve for k. K times fifty seven thirty. Let's rewrite it like normal natural log of a half. We've used our inverse function the logarithm to both sides, and I now know my value of k. It's the natural log of a half divided by the half-life, 5730. I know my parameter for k. I don't know my parameter for a. So what is wanted? We want to find the unknown t so that after time t, my radioactivity is 40% of what it started. And so we can start by saying 0 0.4 times r of 0. And this is now the equation that I'll solve. The interesting thing is that the a won't matter at all. a e to the kt, that's r of t, is equal to 0 0.4 times a e to the k times 0. Again, the a's cancel. That's why the a didn't matter. Furthermore, I know what k is. Uh, so this term over here, that's 1. All that's left, I know k. E to the natural log of a half over 5730, that's my k, times t is equal to 0 0.4. And now I just need to solve for the unknown t. I take a logarithm of both sides to give me the natural logarithm of a half over 5730 times my unknown t is equal to the natural logarithm of 0 0.4. And so if I cross multiply, I'll multiply by 5730, and I'll divide by the natural log of a half, 
to solve for my time, and I'll discover my time, is the natural log 0 0.4 divided by the natural log of a half times the half-life, 5730. Using a calculator, the natural log of 0.4 divided by the natural log of 0.5 times 5730 gives me 7,574 years. What were the key steps? First, we identified a model. Our model was exponential. The dependent variable was equal to a e to the k times the independent variable. There were two unknown parameters, a and k. Second, we took given information. We knew the half-life. We turned the half-life into a statement that was an equation. In this case, the radioactivity after 57, 30 years was equal to half the rep the radioactivity of the starting time. When we translated that into our model, where each time we had our radioactivity we replaced it with a formula, we were able to simplify and solve for our parameter. In this case we only found the parameter k. We then looked at the equation of what we wanted. We were looking for a time where the radioactivity at that time was equal to four-tenths of the starting radioactivity. We then translated that into an equation using our model again. And for this problem, that unknown parameter A didn't matter. It doesn't matter how much carbon you start with. It always has the same time. We then solved that equation for our time, and we had the answer to our problem.